Okay, so we're going to be doing 5.5 .5, Ready, Set, Go, number 16 and 17. And basically, we're, we're, we're dealing with the uh, right triangles, or special right triangles. And so we, they want us to find the sine, cosine, and tangent of those triangles. So um, again, things that you'll be using here are SOHCAHTOA and our special um, 30, 60, 90 triangle. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to draw our 30, 60, 90 triangle, which looks like this. Um, and if you have this in your head, it makes your, like doing this problem way easier because actually some of you are going to get so good at this that you're not going to need this reference triangle anymore because you're just going to like be able to picture it and be like, oh, it's that. It's the same thing as like when you first start learning multiplication tables and you're like 5, 10, 15, 20, and then pretty soon you don't have to do that. So just kind of be patient with yourself in terms of using this triangle. So I'm going to label this triangle. So um, I label the 30, I label the 60, and then I always label the sides using my variables x, 2x, and x root 3. It always has to go this way. x has to be across from 30. 2x has to be across from the 90 degree, also known as our hypotenuse. And x root 3 is across from um, 60 degrees. The reason why it has to be like that is because we talked about this in the very beginning. The smaller the angle, the smaller the side that's opposite it, opposite of it. The bigger the side, the bigger the angle opposite of it. Okay, and does that make sense? So um, we're going to make sure that this makes sense. So the, the next thing that you also need to know is you need to remember so, ka, to, ah, okay. So this is asking for sine of 30. That's so. So they're asking for the opposite over the hypotenuse. So remember the opposite of 30 degrees is across from, across from. It's the one side that the 30 doesn't touch. Notice it's touching this x root 3 side. It's called adjacent. It's also touching or it's adjacent to the hypotenuse. So the only side that's opposite is going to be x. And we all know which one's the hypotenuse. He's the guy who's across from the 90 degrees. I think you've known that since, I don't know, eighth grade? Not sure. Uh, maybe even longer. Okay, so my sine is going to be x over 2x. Um, and then you can simplify as you go, but I don't. So that's just equal to 1 half. So that is the sine of 30 degrees. In fact, if I plug it into Desmos and I make sure that it's in degrees, I should get 0.5 as my answer, right? So I'm just going to move along and then fill all these out. And then I want you to do some observations between these two charts for sine 30 and sine 60. Can really neat patterns um, come out if you just take the time to look at this pattern. So I'm going to talk about that in a second. So the cosine of 30 is going to be AH adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's um, X root 3 over 2X, which simplifies to root 3 over 2. So the cosine of 30 degrees is root 3 over 2. Now, when you plug this into the calculator, the calculator will not give you root 3 over 2. The calculator will give you some decimal approximation of it, which um, I'm just going to tell you, decimal approximations in this section, I don't like. I'm going to be asking for radicals the whole time. Okay. And then the tangent of 30 is going to be OA, which is opposite over adjacent, which is X over X root 3. Which again, I'm going to just say this. This is fine for my class. I am completely fine with the answer of 1 over root 3. But because I'm trying to prepare you for all kinds of things that happen in your life, meaning SATs, meaning you might be taking a placement test when you get to college, um, all of these places besides Ms. Johnson's class, I have to teach you how kind of like the mathematics world accepts this answer. This answer before was unacceptable because you can't divide by a irrational number, right? So we make, we do what we call rationalize the denominator, which means get rid of the radical in the denominator. Like you can only have whole numbers in our, in our denominator. Okay. So um, the way we do this is we just multiply by the number one. In this case, it looks like root three over root three. And so our answer is root three over three. Okay. Um, let me let this catch up to me because apparently I go faster than my computer. Hold on, let's let this guy sink. 
So while that's while I'm waiting for this to come up, literally one over root three is the same exact value. It has a, it carries the same exact value as root three over three. The only difference is that this is like a twenty dollar bill, and then this is like two ten dollar bills, right? The value is the same. They just look different. Okay, so with that being said, I'm just going to rush through this because now we can go quicker. Um, the sine of 60 is x over root 3, I mean, sorry, is x root 3 over 2. So that's x root 3 over 2, x, and then so that equals to root 3 over 2. And you should be saying like, huh, that sounds familiar. And it should, right? It should sound familiar. Um, cosine of 60 is going to be ah, which is adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's x over 2x. And you should be saying, huh. That sounds familiar and it should sound familiar. And then last but not least is the tangent of um, 60, which is opposite over adjacent, o -a, o a, so opposite over adjacent. So that's just x root three over x, which is just root three. Okay, so that's how you find sine, cosine, and tangent. There's no surprises here, right? There was no surprises here. Um, if you had to pick one thing that was really difficult, I like asking this question, you couldn't really say anything. Is like remembering SOH difficult? You're like, not nah, really. Is remembering the actual triangle difficult? And you're like, no, it's kind of already in my head. Is like picking off the opposite over the hypotenuse difficult? No. Is simplifying difficult? And you're like, no. Is rationalizing the denominator difficult? And you're like, not really. Um, so uh, I just kind of want to bring that to light so that, um, like, don't get, uh, what do I say? Don't get all like muddled about just because it looks difficult. This is definitely one of those things um, in mathematics that looks really difficult. But in reality, it's very accessible. There's not one thing you could be like, okay, Miss Johnson, that's the hard part right there. Cause there's not, there's not like all of it is doable. I'm not saying it's easy. I'm just saying it's doable. Okay. So I asked you to think about the patterns and I was kind of talking about them as I wrote. And does anybody see any patterns? Does anybody see any patterns? Yes. Yes, that's correct. Does anybody see any patterns here between number 16 and number 17? Like, look at a pattern here. Yeah, someone says it's the same information, just kind of moved around, just kind of like, you know, moved around and the answer is yeah so like if i look at sine of 30 which is one half one half is cosine 60 and your brain should be like this okay so i'm training your brains to be more mathematically inclined so your brain should go like this like huh i wonder if that's a coincidence and then you continue and you're like oh cosine of 30 is root 3 over 2 and the sine of 60 is root 3 over 2 and your brain should go like, huh, I wonder if that's a coincidence. And so later on, you'll figure out if that is or isn't. But right now, it's good for your brain to like wonder like that. And the last pattern you should have saw was like tangent of 30 is 1 over root 3 versus tangent of 60 is root 3. And your brain should be like, huh, I wonder if that's related. Now, some of this could be answered by you just looking at the definitions and you being like, of course. Okay, so hopefully that, um, you know, stimulated some good thought in your brains. Um, but thank you for listening and let me know if you have any questions.